my new harvest of bamboo from the forest. And uh, that does not count this one, which is a plastic shakuhachi. It's the U flute, the 1.8. Nope. When you want to play intricate music that's very slow and everything depends on tone quality, you get out your long flute. Now this is a 2.1. This is a 1.8. So this makes a huge difference in the sound. I have, I have one or two of those. And uh, this is even more of a difference. So what's nice about this is it's, des it's relatively easy to play. But it can play loudly. special effects. So uh, that's a nice thing to have in your bag of tricks. There's a lot of old music that is intricate and has special virtuosic effects and uh, this would be your guy. And um, it's a giari flute which means that it has plaster on the inside that's carefully shaped. It's glass smooth on the inside. It has a plug that's been added. In other words, they've narrowed down the uh, size of the back bottom hole here and that helps the sound resonate up through the flute. And it's really uh, interesting that this flute would be louder if this hole was bigger. And it was bigger, but maybe the came out of the ground, not not big, not a, well, a little too big. So that's been adjusted. It's just these little intricacies. That's something you don't see very often. Now, what about these bindings? Well, of course, this has been cracked and repaired. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's cracked a lot, but hasn't cracked since because all of these are done at the same time. So you could say that this flute is really quite stable. It's very playable. And in fact, the, there's a lot of care taken to these bindings. So these are flush rattan bindings, which is my favorite kind, but they've been coated with garushi. So it's pretty much a flush surface. It feels very nice in the hands. And so here you have the, the yellow, yellow, this kind of golden color, which is nice you get in older flutes. You know, a lot of uh, modern flutes look like this. They're pale. Here's the row again. It has a lot of nice dynamic range. So this is an emotional decision because do you like the sound of this flute? Or the next one up, this okay. one has been uh, just repaired, very straightforward. Nylon wrappings on the outside, okay, not as elegant. This is a thousand dollars cheaper. But listen to this sound. It's really quite nice. So wow. So that's actually uh, quite a nice deal. You have the the root. What it looks like when. You don't shave it off, and that's uh, quite nice. And so uh, I'm going to move up the ladder a little bit, getting to a 2.4. So it looked like I was putting this flute down for its color, but um, not really. This is another aesthetic. There's no plaster buildup. This is simply carved out. It's hollowed out, filed somewhat. I'm looking through this. Um, it's fairly smooth, but not as smooth as those, and so it doesn't play as easily. Well, it by theory doesn't play as easily, but when I play it, it plays like butter. Wow, so uh, this flute here looks so rustic, but the sound is quite incredible, so it's not cheap, but um, it looks like it when you buy it at the flea market. Here's the, the, burned, uh, the burned bottom from holding it over the fire to dry it out, so uh, 
Apparently, uh, it's, it's held up pretty well. It's got flush rattan bindings, which are really quite attractive. No joint. You know, you don't need a joint as a player. You really don't have to break down your flutes and to store them or travel around, but it makes it easier to build a flute, to cut it, and then work in it each direction, and then just use the joint and put it back together again. And you pick up the portability as a, uh, as a result, but um, it's really nice. Now, I see some, there's some build-up here. This has been worked on to become easier to play. So I said there was no plaster on the inside, but you know what? Some putty has been built up right at the mouthpiece here so that it's easier to get your lip over it. And I find it really works because this is a very easy flute to play. And so uh, um, look at the bottom. I mean, that's, uh, that's really something. The mark, it says Moonheart. So I don't know who Moonheart is. If you know, they will know who, who made this flute. Okay, I'll I'll weaken. This is my favorite of the of the group, um, but it's because I don't have another flute like this. So if you have one of these, then you might want to get something that would give you articulation. Whereas this one here is an inward experience, and it's how you respond emotionally because you're getting feedback from the experience of playing that instrument, and it's. It's, it's reaching inside of you to play the flute in a different way. So that's why the choice of a flute is very, very important. And that's why people have uh, several flutes at home. And that's why some people get caught in the drama of the search for the perfect flute. And I would not go that way. I would say that mostly focus on your playing. You may find your flute is way better than your ability, which is what I found because when I try to move up to a a much better flute after 10 years, I found that my original flute, which I thought was very hard to play, was actually exceptionally easy to play, so the fault lied with me. So, the last one. This is a 2.7. It's a Kitahara, Kitahara Kozo. Kozo is, as it says right here on the label, his famous brother. So this has a good pedigree. We know who it is. His mark is there. His hanko is there. But look at this uh, not very presentable masking tape. So obviously, some glue has to be put in here and then shaved off. Why would you buy a flute so ugly? Because it sounds incredible. Yeah, it's more work. Look how far the holes are apart compared to the the U. So it's hard. It's hard to move your hands up and down quickly when they're far apart. But uh, if you have long fingers, long arms, or you've been playing the shakachi long enough that your hands kind of morph into a nicer <laughs> stretched position, then, then uh, you might want to give this a try. I personally find flutes any longer than this almost impossible to play. So, as with all of this, uh, it depends on your body and your interests. So this one here has got some weight. Um, it's, it's about this. You know what? It's about the same weight as the U flute. This is half the weight, half the weight, and it's super solid. So if you carry it around, it's not going to rock and get twisted in a pack or in your luggage. This. It's got a, a joint in case you ever need it, but I can tell you this is solid as a rock and uh, quite nice. And the shortest of the bunch has a nice joint. The way you open a flute is you put your finger, your fist over it, you hit it a few times, lift it open, and there you go. Put some kind of uh, gel in here, and then you'll be able to just put it back together when you need to. I wouldn't recommend doing this on a, on a daily basis because actually when you look at this it's a urushi right on the wood there's no cork in this so 
Um, it's a precision fit. You really don't want to wear it out. So I leave all my flutes together. And that's it. The world of the long shakuhachi. So good luck in your journey. And I hope it's fun to like listen to see what goes on with these flutes, even though you may not even be looking for a flute, but it's certainly fun to talk about and watch videos about long flutes. So take care. And remember, much more important than your flute is the fact that you play it. So I uh, hope you don't fall into the trap of looking for the perfect flute and uh, maybe even experiment uh, with making one of your own and that might be fun. So thanks a lot.